Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today Home Assistant Hardwired Part 8, Node-RED Client and Siemens Logo 8 as a server. So today I will be using this unit, this little PLC controller made by Siemens. It's called Logo 8. Uh, it's various models on the market. You can have it with the display, you can have it without the display. It has eight digital inputs, which four of them can be configured as analog inputs, and four digital outputs. My one has relay outputs, but you can have it as transistor outputs. You can have various models of them. Uh, some of them are 24 volts. You can have a 230 volts AC. You can have various extensions which are, looks very similar. You don't have to use any cables, you just pop out this plate, blank plate, and stick them together. So, in the end you can have it 24 digital inputs, 20 di digital outputs, 8 analog inputs and 8 analog outputs. Depends how you configure in the end. Why this little controller? Because it's very popular. You can have it, uh, loads of information on the internet. You can have uh, loads of programs ready pre-made, ready to download for it, done by different users. Um, it's immense, so it's very good make. And also, it's not expensive unit. This unit with the displays are about 120 pounds. Without the displays, say 20% cheaper, so it's quite low price for them. Uh, to program these units, if you have a display, you can use the the dis uh, display and the buttons. But I would highly recommend to buy a software for it, which is called Logo Soft Comfort. It costs about 50 pounds. Uh, for a start, you don't have to buy it, you can use it as a demo version. The demo version is exactly the same as the, as the licensed version, but the only difference is you can't program the controller directly. So, you can do your program, test your program with a simulator, uh, but you can't really upload it to the controller, so you will need a licensed version. Uh, also, why the PLC controller? Because many people want to have like separate controller, say for gateway control or maybe lighting control, which makes quite a good idea because if something goes wrong with your home assistant, all, all that part of the automation system will still work. They design and made, so they kind of set and forget. You don't have to do any updates on them. You can do it, but you don't have to. So, uh, they don't require maintenance. Um, sometimes when you, do, when you do the update on your home assistant, then if you got too much stuff, too, much, too many automations, and something goes wrong, then you can be kind of trouble, because a lot of, of devices in your house may not work properly. This one, once you set it, you can forget, and it will always work. For example, I have in my home, I got this, this controller and basically all my programs is done on main automation system is done on this controller. So I can, I can switch off my home assistant and most of the stuff will work. The problem is only I cannot have integrations like my TV, my Alexa, my camera. So Home Assistant is a great companion to it, together. So I can show you, say, my program. So I got alarm programmed, energy board, heating and hot water, lighting, most of the important bits is programmed on this controller and it's only integrated with the home assistant using Modbus. 
Also, those controllers have, usually they have a web server, so you can see, you can program your web server as you wish to see your websites. For example, my, my hot water controls. I can do whatever I need to do. I have heating and lighting. So, I think uh, some cases it's good idea to use this kind of controller. You don't have to use logo. I just show you logo because it's most popular in my opinion, and probably most one of the most easiest ones to program and start with. You probably, if you sit down for a few hours, you're gonna be able to program most important things what you want to program. In case you can't, you don't know, you can find it online. You can probably find already program which you can just download and then upload to your controller and then maybe change some bits to make it suit to your needs. Um, also they design so they I see them in control panels running for 24 7 for last 20 years. So this is good stuff to use it for crucial stuff in your house for example. So let me go to the programming software. So this is a Logos of Comfort. Like I said, it's a programming tool. So on this one, you can, you can see which kind of instruction you can use. You can have inputs, outputs, flags. So for example, if I drag input, I got switch connected to input one and then output link them together then this program will work basically whatever happened on input one it will happen on output one you can use a simulation click here and then basically i can switch the input and see that what's happened on the output switch it off it's if you got 50 blocks you can you can you're gonna have much more of this and you can see exactly what's going on on your program it makes very simple so let me switch off the simulation I'm gonna upload it and then we can use the live mode to see what's going on. Let me switch the switch. Switch it off. So basically this is how it works. You can use the di different functions like end function. So end function works in the way for example if all the inputs used are at high state then the output will be high state you can use all functions so any of the inputs is high it will be on the high on the output so it's work in this kind of way you can have on delay function of delay um, I'm not gonna talk through it because this is not about in this video what else I can this is just a quick introduction if you want to know what the function is doing say let me drop on delay you can click right click help and you got all the explanation how the function will be working and what it does so it's very easy as well when you start programming with it. So, okay, next thing, we will try to configure the logo from, from initial state, how to configure the Modbus connection. So let me delay this one first. Oh. Upload it again. So first thing, make sure all your settings are okay. 
Uh, so synchronize your clock, uh, make sure your da data is okay, all these things, but also internet connection. So let me put this one on. This is quite important bit, not was not gonna work without. And then if we want to use a uh, Modbus, then we should go to network project, add the device. Pick the right one. Then left click right click sorry add server connection modbus connection and this is what it is um, you can untick this box and make it so only one device can communicate i'm gonna leave it like this it will be easier and then click ok so once done this upload the program And then, how we're gonna program the mod was on node red? So go here, properties, modbus address. This is all modbus mapping. So registers from one to twenty-four are discrete inputs. Registers from eight thousand hundred ninety-three to eight thousand two hundred twelve are for outputs. M means flags. They are, this is the range. V, this is a virtual mapping. We're not gonna use this. Analog inputs. Uh, analog flux. Analog output, sorry, and analog flux. So this is the register ad registers address addresses. So this is what we're gonna be using. Let me do a screenshot of it. I can use it later. So basically, to make it logo work as a Mosbar server, this is enough. You don't have to do anything else and use the map what I showed you just a second ago. So now we can go to Node-RED and start programming for reading inputs or outputs. So as usual, easiest way read modbus read debug i already configure the modbus connection normal tcp you can change the port if you change the port on the logosoft comfort for say 600 you can do that you will have to change here as well Say unit ID, you can leave blank, I suppose. Read input, I got switch connected, so let's we start from inputs. So, okay, let me see the Modbus map. The inputs are supposed to be from 1 to 24. So, let me put first 1. Quantity 1, 1 second. Deploy. Let me use the switch. Nothing happened. I know it won't, won't, won't work because as you possibly remember from part two when we was connecting a TCP IP extension unit, I did say sometimes when you got a register address, say number five, and not working you may need to make it minus one or plus one so let me try minus one and put zero because i know this is the case 
No logo does it. And there you go. Basically you got offset. So all the registers shown on this map, this mod was map, you need to make it minus one. So for digital outputs, relay outputs, we have first one 8193. So to read the first output you do you have to put 8192 and so on. So this is how it is with logo. But basically once you figure out this is this is what you have to do and that's it. And it should be working all of them. So we got we can read the inputs. So say let me go back to the logo again. What I gonna do? I'm gonna drop the input, drop the output. And then I will drop the flag. Flags are like coils, so you can read them or you can write to them. In this case, I want to write to them, so I'm gonna connect an output to it. Deploy. So let me use some inject notes. Debug notes. address the flag starts from 8257 so I'm gonna put 8256 and then I'm gonna read the output number two And output number two will be eight thousand nine one hundred ninety three. Read call. Let me force this coin. Sorry, I think I made a mistake. I put unit ID as a register address. So let me force the coin using the flag and it's on. Off. So Basically now we got our log8 configured as a server so we can write to the coils, we can read the inputs, we can read the flags. Same way as I read the input I can read the flags, I can read the coils as well. Okay so in the end of this video I would like to show you the flow which I prepared before I make the video. It will be for all the values.
So basically we can read the, all the inputs using a buffer parser no, node as well, as usual. Uh, read all the relay outputs. I just put 9 flags. Uh, you can have maximum 64 flags. Again, you can write to the flags and you can write to the outputs. Uh, you have to remember, if you're trying to write, write to the outputs to turn on the relay, for example, if you have connected something, you can't do this. You can write to the output only if it's alone, standalone, like this. If something is connected will not work, so you have to remember this. Uh, next thing, uh, logo have analog inputs as well analog outputs and analog flags. Basically, I didn't use them here because it will be practically duplicated. The only difference is we will use holding registers or input registers, similar way as I done in uh, part four and part five with temperature sensors and electricity meter. So you should know how to do it. So I think this is all for today's video. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.